conversion of scores of cars to gas power goes on in a tumble-down garage in Altrincham, Cheshire, on Manchester's outskirts. All is needed is a small conversion kit costing £40 and less than a day off the road for your car. For a skilled mechanic, the whole job takes only one hour and the conversion manufacturers claim that any handy do-it-yourself motorist would find no trouble. Take an engine, remove the air filter, and then take off the carburetor. Next, drill a hole in the venturi of the carburetor. That's the choke part, bypassing the petrol float chamber. Drill sizes are given in the manufacturer's list. Tap the hole made in the carburetor and screw in the gas jet provided in the kit. Replace your carburetor, reconnecting the ordinary petrol line to give yourself two alternative sources of power. Then fit the converter itself, a unit only four and a half inches in diameter, which can be fixed wherever there is a suitable space. A special bracket for this is included in the kit. flexible hose is again provided in the kit and this is used to link the converter unit to the carburetor. And from the converter unit the copper pipe is fixed under the car to come up in the boot and be joined to the gas bottle. This can be any proprietary domestic gas in the butane, methane, propane range. But how safe is a bootload of gas? Gas drivers demonstrator Terry Monaghan there's no doubts. Uh, we did in fact test this one out ourselves. We tried deliberately to set fire to a car using another system, a very high pressure system, which caught fire instantly. This is a low pressure system. You've reduced the pressure coming from the bottle through the valve itself. You've reduced it then to a stage where even if this pipe supporting the gas was severed, the most you would get would be a gas jet at the pressure which is going through that regulator. And in this case, it's about 10 pounds. So as you can imagine, there'd be no flash, there'd be no flood of liquid gas, there'd be no flood of petrol. You'd simply have a gas jet on the end of this. Um, insofar as uh, safety is concerned, safety of the car itself, there's another factor to consider, that you've got, in fact, two electric taps. You've one in the gas line and one in the petrol line. And when you take the ignition key out, you neutralize both systems. You've no more fuel going to the engine at all. Um, <coughs> it's an anti-theft device. Generally, the whole thing works at very much lower pressure than petrol. Uh, the dangers of a split petrol tank, of course, if you've only got the gas, for example, just don't exist. Because, as I say, the gas container itself is far stronger than all of this bodywork. All of this would crush before that tank itself would split. The distributors of the gas conversion kit see it as a primary source of car fuel with the added advantage of being able to fall back on petrol if necessary. Well this is a very simple operation. We've got a simple toggle switch. In this case, it's down here in the right-hand corner. Um, it's like a trafficator switch. Um, one side operates uh, an electric tap in the gas line, and one operates an electric tap in the petrol line. So all I need to do is switch out whichever fuel line I don't wish to use. So what I would do is, in fact, uh, we're now on petrol. I'll just move it into neutral. Now both taps are closed. 
and no fuel is going through at all. We're simply running on what is in the float chamber now, in the carburetor. In a second, it'll start to hesitate. And when it does, see? Then we switch on to gas, and it's that simple. Nothing more involved at all. We're now on gas. You'll notice there's um, a drop in engine noise. This is one of the good features of uh, gas. Um, another good feature is the fact there are no knocks. I can go right down to 15, 20 mile an hour with this car, which weighs over a ton and a half, and pick up again smoothly with no knocking, nothing at all. We can travel at 60s, 70s, uh, barring for the fact, of course, that we're limited to 50. But we're now going very smoothly, as you'll see, at 50 miles per hour. Um, I'll hurry it up a little bit for us in just a second. now topping the 60 mark. This is a good average cruising speed for this car. No difference in pulling. Slightly better pulling, in fact. Smoother, less jerking. And if I choose to switch back again to petrol, it's simply a reversal of the procedure by which I got onto gas. But this time, there's no hesitance, no pause, is simply one flick with the switch. Now the float chamber's refilled and we're back on petrol. It's that simple. Many advantages, of course. We've got a dual purpose system here, operated by simply a flick switch on the dashboard. Um, its many advantages include the fact that it will run on not only propane, butane, but any type of gas, with the exception of the very dirty gases, such as acetylene. Petrol will run to the last drop in the float chamber, in the carburetor. Then the engine will cut out. With gas, once the level of liquid gas in the bottle drops, then power drops with it. In fact, you'll find that instead of being able to cruise as we've done at 60s, you'll be able to cruise at only 30, then 20. There's no sudden uh, complete cutoff of fuel, so you have ample warning of the fact that you're getting low on gas. I don't like to go into statistics, but it's interesting to note that uh, of petrol, the um, amount of combustible material is only something like 27%. But with, for instance, methane, you're getting 98% explosive content, which means better drive and a much cleaner engine, much cleaner. Wherever an internal combustion engine is in use, you can use gas. Um, the applications are limited only so far as the present internal combustion engine is limited. You can take um, concrete mixers, brick hoists, um, garden equipment, any kind of machinery at all that's now being run with petrol can be run using gas and a converter. And my experience now is ranging from 175cc clear up to 5 litre engines with the one converter and no problems, all working. Uh, the manufacturers of the unit are experimenting with a phenomenal experiment whereby it will be possible to run diesel engines using only 7% diesel fuel and 93% methane gas, the savings will be absolutely enormous. The um, system is very, very well advanced and it's a matter of only probably weeks away, certainly at most months away, before we have conversions available to run diesel engines on gas.